Tonight in five questions remain after the U.S. shot down four unidentified objects flying through U.S. airspace over the last nine days. What we know so far. Plus, a Milwaukee community gathers to lay a fallen officer to rest after he was killed in the line of duty. We'll take you to the service. And how local health and city officials are working to improve safety in downtown Madison. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. There is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity. With these recent takedowns, again, there is no indication of aliens or terrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. So what were those objects in the sky? Madison at the center of the latest shoot down of an unidentified object, the latest in a string of similar shoot downs. Just before three o'clock yesterday afternoon, an F-16 from Madison's Truax Field took down an octagon shaped object that was hovering over Lake Huron. Our Andrew Banstra is live at the airfield tonight with more. Andrew. Eric and Susan, the Wisconsin Air Guard isn't telling us much today about how they and the Minnesota National Guard were involved in taking down the object. U.S. intelligence identified the object over Montana early Sunday morning. Overnight, we began seeing an intermittent radar contact east of the position in Montana as it approached Wisconsin. At that point, we developed a game plan once we started seeing another radar contact to go investigate. At 2.42 Eastern Time Sunday, airmen from a Duluth-based fighter unit currently based in Madison shot down an object over Lake Huron. The fighters were from Madison, Wisconsin Air National Guard Unit. Minnesota Governor Tim Wall said in a tweet they were Minnesota airmen who took off from Truax Field. Since the 115th Fighter Wing base there has gotten rid of its F-16s as they prepare for the transition to F-35s. But Dr. Fields from UW-Madison says it may connect to the first shoot down days ago of a Chinese balloon, but we don't know for sure. It's important to note that, you know, what, what's happening with these balloons is nothing new. All right, we know now that Chinese balloons have been overflying the United States since the Trump administration. What's different now is people have seen them. The East Asian expert says the U.S. too has used balloons in the past, and he says the uproar may simply be because the public became aware of something that's been happening for years. I think it's pretty clear that these balloons are not an existential threat to the United States. They're not even a minor military threat to the United States. They don't seem to give the Chinese any extra capabilities than they already have. Field said the most plausible explanation, at least to him, is simply overlapping bureaucracy in China rather than an intentional threat towards the U.S. Now, anytime UFOs are being shot down, especially this close to home, fear, Dr. Field says, is understandable, but he also says we really likely have nothing to worry about. At Truax Field, Andrew Banstra, News 3 Now. Andrew, thank you. A weather alert day is coming up later this week. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti is out on the weather patio with more. Nice evening tonight, Gary. Yeah, you know, th this is almost like a repeat of last week. The first part of the week is mild, and then we have a snow system on Thursday. So uh, that just seems to be the pattern. Let's start out by taking a look at visible clouds track you can see that snow that we got from last week still on the ground from eastern Iowa through southern Wisconsin through the Madison area but it continues to shrink as it melts uh, we've got uh, uh, temperatures that have been barely below freezing last night we dropped to 30 here in Madison uh, most areas were in the upper 20s to around 30 but current temperatures are well into the 40s few places still in the upper 30s over southwestern Wisconsin where there's a little more snow including Platteville uh, Dubuque Iowa at 37 but Madison's at 43 across Dane County all the reporting stations at or above 40 degrees Perry at uh, 41 42 in Sun Prairie and 43 degrees in McFarland look for skies to be mostly clear this evening temperatures will drop back to around freezing by late evening, but then probably hold nearly steady overnight. But we have that alert day in the forecast for late Wednesday night and Thursday for a mid-sized winter storm system that'll bring moderate snowfall. I'll have more on when it'll start, when it'll end, and how much snow we can expect in just a few minutes. Jerry, thank you. Breaking news out of Middleton, where police have closed an investigation looking into harassment allegations involving the Middleton Cross Plain School District's high school football program. Police say there will be no arrests at this time. Now, last month, the school district sent a letter to families notifying them of the harassment but could not release further details pending the investigation. Middleton police say if any additional information is brought to their attention, they will investigate further. The case is being sent to the Dane County District Attorney's Office for review. Also breaking, the Wisconsin Supreme Court has denied a review in a UW Health
Health Nurses case dealing a big blow to nurses who were trying to unionize. The case would have asked the court whether or not UW Health could voluntarily recognize the union. UW Health nurses have been pushing for a union for years, citing lack of staffing, training, and resources. News Street now has reached out to SEIU representatives, but have not yet heard back. UW Health released a statement saying, quote, while the high court declined to take that issue directly through an expedited process this month, both SEIU and UW Health continue to pursue legal, definitive, and expeditious answers to these questions. This is a developing story that you can follow along with at channel3000.com or also by downloading our free News Street Now app. Look for it in your app store. A conservative law firm is stepping into the conversation between hundreds of Monroe residents and their school board. Now this all centers around an $88 million school referendum last fall and our reporting on how the school had to apologize because its advertising for the referendum was misleading. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles has the latest update. Naomi? Eric, the conservative law firm that's Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, known as Will, they're well known throughout Wisconsin for litigation directed at schools and other local governing bodies. Now, of note, they are not filing a lawsuit yet. They're just publicly demanding action from the district. They're asking for the same thing many residents have been asking for all along, to have the district call a second special referendum and then abide by that instead of last fall's referendum. The district has said that's legally impossible. Will says that's not the case. We care strongly about voters having accurate information when they vote on a referendum. And the school district statement statements uh, led most of the voters in Monroe to believe that the tax impact would be 10 to 15 times lower than it ended up being. So there's a simple way to resolve this, and the way to resolve this is a redo, to redo the referendum. I asked the district today about Will's letter. They said their legal department was still reviewing it, but that there was no fraud in their communications about the referendum. Now I've reported already that they have apologized for what they said were mistakes in their communication about the referendum. They have told residents they can't redo it. More details online at channel3000.com. Naomi, thank you. We are about a week away from the primary election, but voters have an important deadline today. If you're voting absentee, Today was the last day to mail in your ballot to make sure it arrives in time for Election Day. Now, you can still vote in person until Friday or Saturday in some locations. This election will determine who will move forward onto the April ballot. You'll find a full list of early voting locations and more on what you should bring with you at our website, channel3000.com. Making State Street and the Isthmus safer is the goal for a new public health initiative in downtown Madison. It's called the Isthmus Safety Initiative and takes a three-part approach to being proactive about safety. Our Tahalil Moedin spoke with program leader. She joins us live downtown with the details. Tahalil? Eric and Susan, the program is set to officially launch in April, but a lot of the work is already complete or underway. So far, leaders have replaced several cameras along State Street and added additional lighting to Buckeye parking lot, an area they said was prone to criminal activity. Public health leaders have also begun the hiring process for what they're calling safety navigators. That's people who will walk the streets downtown at night or during special events to offer help to those in need, from first aid to education on local resources. So when they're walking on State Street for business, for pleasure, if they're just visiting, um, hopefully that these measures will increase their perception and feeling of safety in State Street because we want people here. Public health leaders in partnership with the Rape Crisis Center are also offering free training to downtown restaurant staff on bystander awareness. The goal is to help make sure they have the tools to prevent or de-escalate conflict and stop potential sexual violence. The program is expected to last through the end of the year, but public health leaders say they are asking for an extension on the federal grant funding ISI for another year after that. Tahlil, thank you. Today, Governor Evers ordered flags to fly at half-staff in honor of a Milwaukee police officer who was killed in the line of duty last week. Co-workers, friends, and family members of Officer Peter Jerving gathered to say a final farewell this afternoon. Earlier today, a procession was held from the Krause Funeral Home to Elmbrook Church in Brookfield, where Officer Jerving's funeral took place. The 37-year-old was shot and killed last Tuesday after a struggle with a robbery suspect escalated into a shooting. The suspect was also killed. Jerving served four years with the Milwaukee Police Department. Last year, he earned a merit award for saving a gunshot victim. Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson spoke at today's service. He stepped up for all of us. 
working to improve our safety. And he did that without hesitation and under some of the most difficult of circumstances. To Pete's parents, Patty and Doug Jerving, his brothers, his sisters, I extend the city's deepest condolences. After the service, Officer Jerving was laid to rest at Wisconsin Memorial Park in Brookfield. The time is running out for people still trapped under the debris following last week's powerful earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Rescuers are still finding survivors, but those numbers are dwindling. The death toll has now climbed to more than 36,000, and tens of thousands more are injured. Turkish officials say a number of property developers have been arrested, blamed for building collapses as public anger over the earthquake response grows. Today, the UN announced it will now switch from its rescue phase to providing food and shelter. Authorities in Fulton County, Georgia, plan to release part of a special grand jury report on former President Trump's actions in the state after the 2020 election. The judge in the case ordered the release can't include specific charging recommendations. The special grand jury's in, uh, introduction and conclusion will be made public on Thursday, as well as concerns the panel had about witnesses lying under oath. A Official charges have not yet been filed. The decision on that would be up to a separate grand jury. A meat market in Barron County is recalling some packaged pork products that were sold earlier this year. Prime Cuts Meat Market is recalling ham, steaks, bacon, and bacon pieces sold between January 25th and February 6th. Officials say the products were made without being properly inspected. No illnesses have been reported. But if you have any of those recalled products, you're asked to throw them out. An alert day coming up in the forecast this week. Gary has the latest next at five. Plus, the sturgeon spearing season has finally begun, but the weather is impacting how many fishermen are out on Wisconsin's waters. More details when we come back. And later, the importance of making sure your furniture is secure. At six, we'll share some tips on how you can protect your family. Strong numbers to start the week on Wall Street. The Dow jumping some 377 points. And Aztec up 174 at the closing bell. S&P gains 47. And we'll be right back. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo. Break up with your junk. Save $41 with the code BREAKUP41. At McGann Furniture and Flooring in Baraboo, we know that hardworking people want the most value for their money. At McGann's, we've already sorted out and selected the brands that we feel offer you the most bang for your buck. From young couples to senior citizens, we offer a huge selection at prices that will fit your budget. And remember, at McGann's, we don't raise prices only to lower them later for a sale. Discover the difference at McGann Furniture and Flooring, downtown Baraboo. Are you a T-Mobile customer in Wisconsin? Recently, T-Mobile disclosed that 37 million customer accounts were hacked, putting your personal information at risk. Don't let identity theft ruin your credit score and cost you thousands of dollars. Call Lawton and Gates for a free consultation and learn your rights. Don't delay. The Brothers Main President's Day sale is happening now. Shop local and save with tremendous deals on Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Amana appliances. We have the area's largest selection and the lowest prices guaranteed. Feel like family. Brothers Main. Sometimes you're so busy taking care of everyone else, you don't do enough for yourself or your mouth. But eventually it will remind you. When it does, Aspen Dental is here for you. We offer the custom dental treatments you need all under one roof right nearby. So we can bring more life to your smile and more smile to your life affordably. New patients without insurance can get a complete exam and x-rays for $29 and 20% off treatment plans. Aspen Dental, anything to make you smile. Schedule your appointment today. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Experience the world's number one musical. Don't miss your chance to see The Lion King, one of the most awe-inspiring productions ever brought to life on stage. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at overture.org. All you have to do is point. Yes! 1-800-GOT-JUNK can make it disappear. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo. Break up with your junk. Save $41 with the code BREAKUP41. 
A conservative law firm is confronting the Monroe School District after our reporting on a misleading referendum. Investigative reporter Naomi Coles has the latest. And downtown Madison is being made safer. We take a look at how the new safety initiative will address areas of concern tonight at 6. We're getting things done. As President Biden visited the Madison area to deliver his message to the people of Wisconsin, News 3 Now brought you team coverage of this historic day every step of the way. This is a blue collar blueprint to rebuild America. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. A new CDC survey released today found teen girls in the U.S. experienced record levels of violence, sadness, and suicide risk in recent years. Data was collected in the fall of 2021 and shows 57% of teen girls felt persistently sad or hopeless. That is double the rate for boys. The survey found nearly a third of teen girls seriously consider it, considered attempting suicide. About one in seven also said they had at some point been forced to have sex and nearly one in five had experienced sexual violence in the past year. Meanwhile, some mental health experts are calling for a complete overhaul in treating behavioral health needs for children. The new study looked at the records of more than 28,000 children ages 6 to 17 who visited the emergency room with mental health issues. Researchers found less than a third of them had supporting outpatient mental health visits within seven days and only 55 percent had a follow-up visit within 30 days. Research has shown follow-up visits with a mental health care provider lowers a person's suicide risk and raises the chances that they will take their prescription medication. Health officials are finding changes to school nutrition standards has helped reduce obesity in children. New study looked at more than 14,000 kids and teens 2005 to 2020. And researchers found an overall decrease in body mass index or BMI after standards mandated more fruits, vegetables, whole grains and low fat dairy. The overall BMI decrease was seen across ages and income levels, which researchers say is significant. The new study comes as U.S. leaders consider updates to further limit added sugars and sodium in school meals. Right now, scientists in the U.K. are developing new ways to recycle polyester clothing instead of just throwing them away. Researchers at the University of Portsmouth are cutting up clothing, dipping it in liquid nitrogen to break it down into small particles. Those pieces are then put in a water-based solution with bioreactor enzymes that digest the plastic and turn it back into raw material to make new plastic. Scientists say the enzymes could help recycle polyester and stop millions of tons of waste from ending up in landfills or being burned every year. The recycling rates for textiles when they reach their end of life is very, very poor, typically less than 10 percent. Having a nature inspired solution to uh, reutilize the polymers that, that, that are in our clothing at end of life could be a, a real game changer. And polyester typically is made from petroleum, and it's the most widely used clothing fiber in the world, accounting for 60% of what we wear. But experts say it's not sustainable, especially when it is dyed and treated with chemicals. Let's get a look at your first war in weather now. Beautiful today. But Gary, keep an eye on some weather later in the week. Yeah, kind of, this is almost like a repeat of last week. You know, we start the week out mild, and then we look at the potential for a winter storm system about Thursday. So three things you need to know in our forecast. Valentine's Day will be mild across southern Wisconsin, with high temperatures in the upper 40s will be in the lower 40s on Wednesday, still above normal uh, conditions, and also see some rain tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening especially. Showers could linger into later tomorrow night and then end on Wednesday morning. However, it turns colder late Wednesday night into Thursday, just like last weekend. We have the potential for accumulating snow on Thursday, so we have an alert day in the forecast for a moderate snowstorm uh, from late Wednesday night through Thursday. A general three to six inch snowfall expected over much of southern Wisconsin. There could be some locally heavier amounts as we get closer to the event. Uh, like last time, there could be a band of heavier snow. We'll have to watch out for that, but all of southern Wisconsin will be affected by snow. The highest probabilities of any heavier snow would be mainly south of Wisconsin Dells. This is the snow Snowfall potential. We're thinking a wide area of about three to six inches of snow, but there'll be sharp cutoffs to the northwest and the back edge of the storm, and a sharp cutoff to the south and east where the snow changes over to rain or mixes with rain. That's more likely south of the Wisconsin Illinois state line. The computer models have been coming southward a little bit on this, although uh, last week they were more up toward the Twin Cities with also a heavier snowstorm. But this is a more typical type of storm system because while there are winter storm watches out across western Minnesota and eastern North Dakota, that's for a potential blizzard for tomorrow. 
tomorrow with a couple of inches of blowing snow as uh, the, we'll just see rain here. But the storm that we're watching already has winter storm watches from Colorado into parts of Nebraska and Kansas on weather track. The jet stream coming in from that area right now it's coming in from the northwest, but it's it's lifting up to the north, allowing some of that milder Pacific air to move eastward. But this is what we're watching. It's developing storm system in the southwestern part of the country. Snow in the mountains, rain at the lower elevations, and that will follow right along the jet stream into uh, the central part of the Midwest as we head into uh, the day on Thursday. Now, right now, winds are mainly out of the south with high pressure located just to our south, and that's going to keep us mild, but it's also going to start bringing moisture in our direction. So expect some rain tomorrow. Right now, temperatures, upper 30s, lower 40s. As we take a look at future track beginning uh, tomorrow morning, notice mainly rain here as we head through tomorrow night. And then as we get into Wednesday, it kind of tapers down. But then we turn our attention to the south and west, and here comes the snow, and this will be in here during the day on Thursday. So that's what we have to watch out for. Look for skies to be mostly clear tonight. Planning your night across Dane County, low of 32 in Brooklyn, 35 in Verona. Across the rest of southern Wisconsin, a little colder to the east, 32 in Watertown, a little warmer to the west, 35 for the low in Prairie du Chien. Tomorrow will turn cloudy. It'll be windy for Valentine's Day with rain in the afternoon, high temperature at 48. You can see on future track, pretty rainy through the afternoon, but notice those temperatures. Upper 40s. It continues through tomorrow night and then kind of winds down as we head into Wednesday morning. Rainfall amounts probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about a quarter to a half inch generally across southern Wisconsin. 7 to 10 day forecast. Again, that sharp drop off in temperatures with the alert day on Thursday. Cold for Friday. Then we warm up just like last week for the weekend with highs in the 40s and then rain showers on Monday could mix with snow on Tuesday and then change to snow on Wednesday of next week. As we check out first warrant traffic, here's the view of the Beltline at Park Street traffic moving pretty steadily in both directions on the Beltline. No problems. Don't see any red on the Beltline or on I-39-90-94 on the east side of Madison. Travel times right now, 15 minutes either way on the Beltline between University Avenue and the interstate. Heading out of Madison, 25 minutes from the Beltline to Janesville and I-39-90. US-12 middle to the Sauk City takes you 16 minutes. Downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue and US-151 is a 17-minute trip. That's your news for now for Swarm Traffic. Gary, thank you. The Sturgeon spearing season kicked off over the weekend, but warmer temperatures meant there were fewer anglers out on the water. The DNR says about half the amount of shacks were on northern Wisconsin waters compared to last year. They counted about 3,000 on Winnebago. For those who did go out, the water clarity paid off. 522 sturgeon were harvested Saturday compared to 431 on opening day last year. Nine o'clock, there was four of us in the shack and came in, took out my grandfather's spear and took them. Wow. What is it like? It's quite a rush. People, uh, if you don't understand surgeon spearing, you need to experience it once. Yeah. And you're hooked. Spearing season runs for a maximum of 16 days, so that's through the 27th, or until harvest caps are met. Still to come tonight at 5, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, a time to celebrate the ones we love. But it's also a time when people are vulnerable to falling for scams. We'll tell you how to protect yourself next. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Seven feet tall. A great deal isn't a great deal if almost no one can get it. Boop. See ya. At U.S. Cellular, everyone qualifies for our best deals. Choose from any unlimited evolved plan and get $830 off any phone with no trade-in needed. This is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing. In as little as two weeks, Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. 
Do you suffer from chronic or severe back or neck pain? Did you know that there is now a treatment method available right here at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center that offers hope of avoiding spinal surgery for those suffering with bulging, herniated, or degenerative discs? Our therapies help reduce pain related to these conditions and have a high success rate in helping people just like you avoid back or neck surgery. I have experienced low back pain for over 15 years. I had back surgery when I was 26 and had difficulties recovering. The doctors at Midwest Spine and Nerve Center have given me a new lease on life. I am now able to enjoy an active, pain-free lifestyle. Call Midwest Spine and Nerve Center now to schedule a no-obligation consultation to see if our progressive pain-relieving therapies are right for you. Right now is absolutely the best time of year to buy furniture. And Slumberland Furniture is the best place during our huge President's Sale. Come see our special offers throughout the store. Plus, special financing is available for convenient monthly payments. And did you know Slumberland offers custom fabrics and colors at no extra charge? Check out this gorgeous sectional, and it comes with a free ottoman. Plus, so much more during our huge President's Sale at Slumberland Furniture. Look! It's easy to say things. Look closer. Anyone can do that. But at U.S. Cellular, when we say you get unlimited data for $29.99 per line, we mean $29.99 per line. Even one. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. As Valentine's Day approaches, the FBI and the Federal Trade Commission are warning people to be on the lookout for romance scams. And con artists targeting lonely people through dating apps and social media to get their money. Mike Valerio explains how you can protect yourself and your loved ones. She said she wanted, wanted me to text her, so I started texting her. Broke and heartbroken. So I went to my bank account and said I was $5,780 in in the debt. New numbers from the Federal Trade Commission show romance scams cost nearly 70,000 consumers $1.3 billion in 2022. A growing concern, romance turning into investment scams. This romance becomes the hook and then that person that they now feel attached to suggests to them that they might try investing in cryptocurrency uh, and it's all a scam. They send money and they never get it back. They warn anyone can be a target don't even need to be looking for love. So what are the red flags? A big one would be that they cannot meet you in person. They will have all sorts of excuses not to meet in person. And generally those excuses are built right in from the beginning. They're baked into their identity. The FBI sharing these tips for protecting yourself. Be careful about what you post and make public online. Scammers can use these details to better understand and target you. Research the person's photo and profile to verify their identity and never send money to anyone you have not met in person. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. And stay with us while we'll the final check of your first one forecast after a short break. Former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasewicz for Supreme Court. Master Force Boost 20 Volt Cordless Power Tools. The latest in heavy duty innovation, where tool and battery intelligently sync for maximum power and performance. Brushless motors deliver up to 10 times longer life and 50% more runtime. More torque to drill through the toughest jobs. More speed to make short work of the project at hand. Race to savings with this 20-volt impact driver kit. Only $79.99 exclusively at Menards. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. Because around here, we're all about comebacks. Whether it's helping you recover after a car accident or return to the job following an injury, it's us fighting the odds and the insurance company to make sure you get the compensation you and your family deserve. No one loves a great comeback story more than Lawton Cates, which motivates us to fight for our clients every day. Your life counts. Lawton Cates. Call us today. 
is President's Day, we're throwing a five-star celebration at Bob's Discount Furniture, making it super easy to shop my top-rated products. I've got on-trend styles. Ooh. Unbeatable prices. Ah. Thousands of highly rated and reviewed pieces ready to ship now. So this President's Day, ditch the gimmicks and phony sales because the stars have aligned at Bob's. The reviews are in. Shop Bob's for style, value, and quality. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. Every single moment takes your breath away. Every powerful emotion makes your spirit soar. Everyone who sees it remembers it forever. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at overture.org. I'm going for Judge Janet Protest. Janet Protest. Protestowitz? <laughs> you don't need to know how to say Protestowitz to know that Judge Janet believes in abortion rights, fairness, and public safety. Protestowitz. <laughs> Gary rejoins his final check of the forecast. Yeah, beautiful sunset out there right now. Oh, we just oh. missed it. The sun just went below the horizon. We were watching it over the last couple of minutes. That's a live view from the uh, Madison camera. But, uh, we caught it on the Platteville uh, camera, being a little farther west. Sunsets a couple minutes later. Current temperatures, uh, mainly in the 40s, a couple of 30s uh, southwestern Wisconsin and uh, over toward the Fox Valley. But across Dane County, temperatures are mainly in the lower to middle 40s. We look for skies to remain clear this evening. Temperatures dropping into the lower 30s by late evening. CBS Evening News coming your way next. Stay tuned for that. And we're back in 30 minutes for news for now at 6.